The next pathogen that we'll talk about is Corynebacterium diphtheriae. This is the bacteria that causes diphtheria. Diphtheria is a gram-positive club-shaped bacillus. You'll be able to pick this up by looking at the slide because it has metachromatic granules and the bacteria is arranged in what's called palisades. That's just a fancy way of saying that it's V or L shaped and I'll show you an image on the next slide. Diphtheria is transmitted via respiratory droplets. Diphtheria is basically pharyngitis, but it, you know, for lack of a better term, it's just upper respiratory tract infections. So those are the symptoms you want to look out for. There are some associated systemic symptoms, and we'll talk about those as well. Historically, diphtheria is associated with either not being immunized against it or traveling to a region where there are low vaccination rates, and therefore the bacteria is more likely to exist and you're more likely to contract it. Here's that image of diphtheria. So again, metachromatic granules and palisade formations. If you look on the top left of this slide, you see a really nice example of that V-shaped palisade. So because this is a little bit more unique looking, I might know what this looks like um, as compared to other bacteria where you don't really need to know what it looks like at all. As far as virulence factors goes, there's an exotoxin. It's a beta prophage exotoxin. The buzz phrase that shows up all the time is ADP ribosylation of elongation factor 2. So basically this exotoxin does, does that and that inhibits protein synthesis. And when you inhibit protein synthesis, certain tissues and cells can't grow, so we've got cell death. Now the way that I memorize this is I look at the word diphtheria, which ends in AE, and I use that AE to remind me ADP ribosylation and E for elongation factor 2. So pretty straightforward. Really the highest yield part of diphtheria is the clinical features because this is very unique. The pseudomembranous pharyngitis is what you're going to see on your exam. So what this is, is a grayish pseudomembrane that will occur in the pharynx and you're going to see a characteristic picture like you see on this slide and that's telling you that the answer is diphtheria. So how the vignette will probably go is that you've got a patient who either is not immunized or who travels to an area that's endemic with a low vaccine rate, they start to develop nonspecific upper respiratory tract infection symptoms. So they might get um, erythematous pharyngitis to start, and then that red area of their pharynx will slowly transform into what you see here, that grayish pseudomembrane. The interesting thing about the pseudomembrane and what you might see in the vignette is that if you scrape it, it tends to bleed and it's made up of white cells, red cells, all these um, dead cells, um, different debris. And so if you scrape it, it bleeds. And so it's not the same appearance. It doesn't have the same um, characteristics of other types of pharyng pharyngitis, pharyngitises, pharyngitises. Um, so you, again, you just want to know it starts erythematous. It turns to pseudomembranous and grayish. And when you see that transformation, the vignette is screaming at you that the answer is diphtheria. Now, there's, there are some systemic symptoms that can be associated with diphtheria. So I want to point them out so that if you're doing a question and you think you're like, oh, it's a pseudomembranous pharyngitis, this has to be diphtheria, but you see some of these other curveballs, you're not second guessing yourself. So some of those associated symptoms include cervical lymphadenopathy, myocarditis, acute tubular necrosis, and adrenal insufficiency. And because this spans over you know, various organ systems, heart, kidney, adrenal, the laboratory abnormalities they can give you in the question might make you second guess yourself. But don't second guess yourself. If you see a grayish pseudomembranous pharyngitis, the answer is 100% diphtheria. The reason that you have these associated systemic symptoms is once that beta prophage exotoxin gets into the blood, gets into the lymphatics, and then disseminates throughout the body, it can affect the heart and cause myocarditis, the kidney and cause ATN, the adrenal and cause adrenal insufficiency. So just because you're seeing other associated problems, don't second guess yourself. So that's pseudomembranous pharyngitis. That's the main highest yield clinical feature of diphtheria and what you really want to know for your exam. Just for completeness sake, though, let's talk about cutaneous diphtheria. So this is another type of diphtheria. The bacteria can manifest as a skin infection as well. And there's a little bit of a difference here. So how this works is 
the bacteria will directly touch a pre-existing skin injury. So the patient in the vignette is going to have a skin lesion before the exposure to diphtheria. And then the diphtheria will directly enter that pre-existing wound. And then once that happens, you get some really nasty looking ulceration. The interesting thing here is that just like in the pseudomembranous pharyngitis in the throat, you can have a grayish scaliness over these ulcers. So the picture you see on my slide here doesn't really look gray, but if you get the skin injury and you get cutaneous diphtheria, you can see an ulcer with a little bit of grayish um, scaliness over it. So you can see gray in the throat on that pseudomembrane, and you can also see gray on the pre-existing skin injury that turns into cutaneous diphtheria. Really briefly for, for treatment, you give an antitoxin plus either penicillin G or erythromycin. But the antitoxin is the most important thing, so that's treatment. Here's the summary slide. Diphtheria is a club-shaped bacillus. It's gram-positive. It has metachromatic granules. It's arranged in palisades, which is to say that it can be in V or L-shaped formations. Major virulence factor is an exotoxin. Remember ADP ribosylation of elongation factor 2. And no for clinical features, pseudomembranous pharyngitis with that grayish pseudomembrane in the throat, plus or minus some systemic symptoms, and then less frequently and less high yield, no cutaneous diphtheria where a pre-existing skin injury becomes inoculated and turns into an ulcer. Treatment, antitoxin, plus either penicillin G or erythromycin. That's all.